Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. Uh, if you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you are returning, an equally warm welcome to you and don't forget to like, subscribe and share as it's a free way of supporting the channel and really gets the uh, YouTube algorithm to promote this, uh, this videos and my videos and get the quality content out there so um, let's get into really uh, the analysis and um, starting off first of all as we always do on the week ahead so uh, looking at the upcoming uh, uh, fundamental macroeconomic drivers uh, so G7 finance ministers reached a historic agreement on Saturday to reform the global tax system ahead of the highly anticipated G7 leader summit on June 11th June um, uh, 11th to the 13th sorry of 2021 um, not too sure what that's going to have on uh, what impact that's going to have on the uh, on, on forex currencies but what we do know is that monetary policy meetings in the eurozone canada and russia will be keenly watched and that should have obviously uh, um, uh, depending on what the ecb and the bank of canada uh, talk about um, that should have an, an, an effect on those currencies as well as updated GDP figures for Japan, the Eurozone, the UK and South Africa. So GDP is also another important metric to keep your eye on. Other important releases include US and China inflation. Inflation is definitely another um, <clears throat> metric, especially in the US as uh, as um, inflation is really key to uh, to where the Federal Reserve or, or drivers of where the Federal Reserve may want to take either tapering or interest rate hikes or holding and foreign trade data US and Australia consumer sentiment Germany and India industrial output and Japan current accounts so quite a busy uh, week this week coming up uh, from a from a, um, a fundamental perspective, so uh, let's get into really the uh, the, the the technicals and uh, looking at the dollar index. And the dollar index is just a measure of uh, dollar strength against the basket of currencies like the pound, the uh, yen, and the euro. And the dollar has actually been um, on 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 a bit of a weaker uh, over the past maybe month or two has been on a bit of a decline and um, this is actually uh, uh, pushing in, in inflation actually higher a weaker currency as you can see uh, actually pushes inflation higher and um, over the past uh, few weeks or so we've pretty much just seen prices really kind of remain in this range kind of like a, a holding pattern um, maybe an accumulation pattern but uh, from a fundamental perspective we did have on Friday uh, supply strains hold back the US jobs market so the US jobs market is a is a key indicator as to um, uh, decisions or to, for the Fed to make decisions as to where they're going to go with monetary policy so uh, US jobs growth disappoint again in May because I think in April uh, there was a massive miss with non-farms and again it wasn't necessarily a fantastic number it's below expectations uh, but uh, but this is not a demand issue a host of reasons are keeping the supply of workers constrained which means firms are having to pay up if they want to recruit staff so tensions will eventually ease but in the near term it heightens risk of more elevated inflation readings so um, Again, some of the uh, what, what the experts say um, and uh, some commentary on this. So adding over half a million new jobs would be amazing in a normal month, says Paul Ashworth of Capital Economics. But they but these are not normal times and job creation is slower than hoped. So I think the um, the, the issue really is not necessarily the uh, the. the um, the fact that there's no jobs it's actually getting uh, workers back into uh, jobs into actual employment and um, and so again this is driving monetary policy so fed to be deliberately patient on asset taper Mester says and um, basically tapering is basically supporting the economy the central bank the federal reserve uh, bond buying at the moment and really supporting the economy what they want the economy to be is self-sufficient rather than depending on the fed really kind of um, you know uh, supporting the economy through bond buying and debt buying so um, so I would say tapering should be positive 
for the currency. But the but the Federal Reserve really can't remove tapering if employment, for example, isn't um, or unemployment isn't getting uh, 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 lower and employment going higher, right? Because employment is is directly um, correlated to GDP and the economy, so um, the Fed are pretty much very very patient or deliberately patient on on removing uh, support and stimulus, right? So um, the dollar are in a bit of a, um, a difficult situation, and even Wall Street pros are as baffled as anyone by the dollar's fate. So Goldman sees uh, 2002 to 2007 deja vu of deficit-driven weakness um, and rising exports shouldn't uh, fuel currency drop Morgan Stanley. So there's some conflicting information when it comes to um, understanding uh, from, from Wall Street's the smartest guys in the room, whether they think the dollar should be going higher or lower, right? So wondering where the dollar's headed in the U um, as the US deficit keeps growing, uh, Wall Street is also trying to figure that out as well because the more the Fed um, are you know, printing money and supporting the economy, economy uh, the, the, the bigger the deficit right so going back to the dollar um, the dollar at the moment when there are uh, generally um, when when it's when the path isn't clear as to where prices should go higher or lower what tends to happen is you get what's known as a range right this is where traders are in agreement between um, you know an expensive or a bargain area so for now I think we probably will remain in this uh, ranging market probably some negative sentiment uh, coming in due to jobs so um, we are at the 2021 lows the year yearly lows at the moment what will push prices lower for the dollar we need a catalyst so I do think that um, if the news um, generally is is um, okay for the dollar we should probably remain in this type of range between probably this 90 to 9 uh, 89 20 to 90 uh, 97 um, area but again if you want to get long on the dollar um, I would say definitely has to be driven by some sort of good news right so if prices do drift down to here and you want to be a buyer um, wait for some sort of again positive sentiment positive catalyst to be a buyer of the dollar and again this is just for uh, dollar um, overall strength or weakness you'd go to you know the dollar yen or the dollar swiss for example to look for any kind of uh, buy trades um, but use the dollar index as um, confluence as of the dollar strength or weakness and again if you're looking for any kind of short trades for dollar um, and dollar shorts you're looking for prices to really kind of come up a, a bit more and then look for any kind of shorts or even actually look for, looking for shorts now on you know any of the dollar crosses as long as they're in you know supply zones so dollar a bit mixed for me um, not clear at all my my bias is probably more to the uh, to the short side more short side uh, coming um, in the near term at least moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen again with uh, with with the dollar not doing so great and and the japanese yen not doing great as well we did have a dollar drifting higher but then um, kind of breaking through this supply zone but then coming really come coming back down into this area here of demand where we have demand right there to end the week so um, again for me fundamentally this is more of a difficult pair the yen isn't um, a strong pair at all they've got issues surrounding uh, coronavirus and obviously with some weak sentiment around the dollar, uh, potentially uh, the, the direction of travel is, is harder to kind of predict. But if you do want to get involved in um, a dollar buy, then this is probably the area to look for some buy trades, or if you're looking for you know this area here to look for some potential buying. But I, what I would say is to be just be mindful because the more times the level is touched, the uh, weaker it becomes so in fact probably this 108 107 area would be the better area to look for long dollar trades if you're looking for uh, uh, long yen trades or to short the uh, the, the dollar uh, dollar yen and again i would probably look for some sort of catalyst maybe some sort of risk off sentiment yeah uh, because in the risk off environment meaning that there's fear uncertainty and uh, money tends to move into safe haven assets like the uh, japanese yen or safe haven currencies if you can get some risk off sentiment come into the market and prices do come up to here 
this 110 um, area, then that would actually be a decent short trade um, against the dollar. Moving on to the dollar Swiss, and the dollar Swiss again, uh, uh, was had had some hopes matter of fact for prices to actually move to the upside but with again dollar um, weakness coming in some disappointing jobs numbers probably going to see the dollar um, range within this area here I think within this uh, these two demand zones 89 area round number uh, but again, similar to the dollar yen, I'm not keen on this currency pair um, for a long or a short at the moment. I probably would have been more long on this pair um, uh, had there been um, some positive news. But um, now the bias really has changed. And again, if in doubt, stay out. There's not. There's no point in forcing uh, trades and dollar trades. Um, you know, from a fundamental perspective, if it's not clear, you really want to look for you know, divergences, clear divergences in monetary policy and uh, the uh, the data. But um, again, if you do want to get short, you're looking at these areas here for short trades and uh, any areas here for long trades. But I would probably say again, look for some sort of fundamental catalyst to look for any kind of long or short trades on that currency pair. Moving on to the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD um, biases more to the short side so any pullbacks into this one two two zone or even higher to the one two three would probably be where my bias would lie if i'm trading this pair um, there really isn't any kind of strong demand at the moment even though there is a bit of demand right here it's not really strong you can see where there's strong supply right you can see where the way prices have moved this price hasn't Price action hasn't proven that there's strong demand here. So um, it's a bit of a tough one to actually look for any kind of uh, um, long trades, especially with the fact that the Bank of Canada are looking to taper and the Fed are not looking to taper. They're looking to be patient, as we've uh, previously uh, seen here. They're looking to be patient, deliberately patient on tapering. So, you know, with the, with the Bank of Canada tapering, um, you know, the, really the path of least resistance is still to the short side, in my opinion. Moving on to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar. And again, I think New Zealand dollar is one of the, uh, the, the uh, currencies that I am um, buying. And I'm in um, a couple of positions on the New Zealand dollar, um, not necessarily against the US dollar, but um, uh, I think for, for, for the foreseeable future, the, the New Zealand dollar should be a buy, again, not financial advice, but you're seeing this play out as prices did come down into here, um, in, into this demand zone. We did get some um, some bullish uh, price, uh, I say bullish price, but bullish fundamental news for the New Zealand dollar earlier in the week and some negative, obviously, or not, not so great news for the uh, US dollar. And that should really be the catalyst for, I think, a higher um uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar exchange rate. If you miss this, or if prices don't work out, then I think the again the bias to the upside is uh, just waiting for basically price to come down into this demand zone. Understanding that you're buying the New Zealand dollar at a better price, a cheaper area. If you're looking for any kind of short trades, I'm going to just move this over. I think this is where your nearest supply zone is and if you do want to get short on the uh, New Zealand dollar and buy the US dollar for some reason that's the first area and then this would be a nice technical area I do like this zone right here for a short trade technically but just not fundamentally it's not on my list of um, pairs to go short on moving on to the pound dollar and the pound dollar, I think, has definitely got some more upside potential. Again, especially with uh, understanding the uh, the dollar weakness and some potential UK strength. Bank of England plays down risk of runaway UK inflation. Governor Bailey, two policymakers say price gains are temporary. Investors expect Bank of England to hike rates as early as next year, which is all always positive, um, as long as the as GDP um, um, is also uh, growing as well. So Bank of England policymakers push back against concerns that the UK's rapid economic rebound, right, economic rebound from the pandemic will lead to a damaging wave of inflation. Now, central banks have a 2% inflation target and the I think the um, Monday's comments come after data showed the UK inflation more than doubled 
in April to 1.5. So they're still below their uh, their two percent target, right? So he says. So here he says said inflation will later return to the central bank's two percent target as growth slows. So. Um, Basically, uh, the potential for a rate hike um, if inflation does uh, start to pick up even more, but also as well, the economy has to also do well uh, for the for there to be um, any kind of um, a suggestion that there is going to be a rate hike. And rate hikes are generally positive for a currency, so they're a um, bit ahead of the US at the moment. So any kind of pullbacks to a demand zone, if we can get a pullback into that 140 area, I think that's going to be a very uh, nice buy technically. And my bias would be to buy the pound over the dollar at the moment if you are looking for short trades um buying the us dollar then i think pretty much now i'm not too keen on this area to be fair um but you would probably want to look for any kind of short trades and let me just as a matter of fact let me just uh move this over any kind of short trades from this supply zone right here not the best supply zone but um again it's it's there uh if you want to look for any kind of short trades moving on to the euro dollar and the euro dollar again we did get a sell-off this week um there was a, a nice little uh, capture pain relief setup um that trade some traders did did get involved in this week in the private mentoring group uh, made a bit of money but unfortunately prices didn't continue to follow through and this is due to obviously fundamental uh, drivers so um with the european central bank this week um uh, there's, a, I guess, a statement and a press conference, the ECB preview, and they're looking to also avoid uh, talks about tapering. So, but with higher inflation and accelerated vaccination rollout and a strong economic rebound on the back of post-lockdown reopenings, uh, will put not only the ECB's asset purchase in front, um, purchase front loading to the, uh, to the test next week, avoiding the T word, so that's tapering word contributed to a pause in the climb of euro rates so again if they talk about tapering then there's uh th what they're suggesting is that uh, rates should rise so the exchange rate should get stronger we think this will resume after the meeting so again more potential upside for the uh for the euro but also as well uh, ecb pushing ahead with faster bond buying until september so i think um, next week's meeting I think uh, um, they're probably going to hold fire on any talk on tapering but in September um, is when they may start to talk about tapering so if that is the case we could still see prices start to range I mean prices are due for a range especially after this um, you know this, this this quite a large move to the upside a good maybe what's that 500 pips or so um, to the upside with really no kind of pullback so after a trending market we should get some sort of ranging market again the catalyst what is what is the catalyst that will push prices higher fundamentally if the ecb uh, basically um are not talking about tapering then um we could see prices just literally range between where we are now or this high this one two two uh, six six four area right so this area here that could be the high um or highs up here and really this where we are currently in this demand zone this one to one area so let's see what potentially happens uh this week but overall the path of least resistance is to the upside lots of forecasts talking about one two five being the the area um uh, where the euro dollar exchange rate should go so any um you know pullbacks into a demand zone i think are definitely buying opportunities as long as the, the data supports the narrative moving on to the euro um yen and the euro yen i've been trying to get into this for months to the long side and it just hasn't provided an opportunity but we do have and we uh, a bit of a pullback into this zone now um in fact we've got one large quite a large demand zone uh, 
basically it's like, it's like here so a lot of traders start to get you know start to complain and moan about the demand zones being a bit too uh, too much and when you get large demand zones like this the best thing to do is to understand where there is likely to be the most demand yeah so um, and we use support and resistance within these areas um, of large demand to understand that there were also going to be support and resistance traders so not only will we have you know because prices are making higher highs and higher lows right so we know that there's demand here but within this large demand zone of probably about 200 pips we can break this zone down into understanding where traders are likely to look for trades and buy trades and you can see where we've got resistance resistance support in this area so i think this one three two point you know probably five area uh, half round um half number is probably the uh, a really good zone to look for any kind of uh, long trades if we can get that uh, come back down to there from a daily time frame perspective i also think probably now is decent but you're trading really at high, so I'd really want to see a, deep, a, a better pullback, to be fair, before looking at getting uh, long also as well. If that's the last swing low to swing high, um, you really want to see uh, prices yeah, come down to fair value. Yeah, I want to see fair value or just below that fair value there. I do like this this area here. If prices can come down, I, I do want to be a buyer in and around this area here. But um, again, if you're looking for sell trades and buying the yen, then you're pretty much looking for a pullback into this zone here before looking at getting short. Again, I'd probably say um, wait for risk off to really kind of occur before looking at any any kind of a short trades. But I do think that the um, the euro yen is due for a deeper pullback. The catalyst could be. Um, uh, the uh, the ECB meeting, but any pullbacks for me, even if prices do go through here, through that through that zone there, I do think I do want to be a buyer, continue to be a buyer here because um, as long as Europe start catching up economically um, to 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 other nations and the vaccine rollout, I think the euro is a buy, especially over the uh, the Japanese yen. Um, moving on to Aussie dollar, Aussie dollar. There was a really nice stop hunt setup, which um, I know a few traders got involved in. Not something that I cover in this, uh, in this, uh, in these videos. I do mainly just daily supply and demand zones. But there was a nice stop hunt below that area, and um, it's working out so far. Um, from a demand zone perspective, prices did come down into again this zone here pretty much pinged off it and then went to the upside so there was two ways really to get involved in this trade um, and uh, how you really kind of get involved in the trade is when prices come down into the demand zone you go down into a lower time frame and look for entries in and around these areas so um, there was a decent opportunity to get long and I think this is probably going to continue to uh, uh, to go higher in at least the short term anyway. There is some supply just above here, but I do think with, uh, again, some negative sentiment around the US dollar and positive um, uh, uh, data around the Australian dollar, I think we should continue to drift higher. Any pullbacks into demand, I think, are buying opportunities. So uh, that's where we are with the Aussie dollar. Aussie yen, again, risk off. Um, Oh, sorry, I should say risk on sentiment driving uh, prices higher and as well as, you know, really good data coming out for the Australian dollar. We should really see uh, prices drift higher. If prices do drift lower for me. It's just buying opportunities, um, you know, against the, uh, the Japanese yen. The Japanese yen really isn't a buy at the moment in a risk on environment. So uh, that's where we are. But technically, if you do want to get short, I think this, uh, this supply zone from the 85.50 area is actually quite a decent zone to look for uh, short trades technically just not fundamentally um, and really prices driven by fundamentals and risk sentiment in the medium to long term in the short term it's more to do with liquidity and uh, avoidance of slippage I guess um, so uh, there is an opportunity to get short if you want to get short here but the path of least resistance again is still to the upside and finally gold gold 
benefiting really from um, dollar weakness as well as um, inflation concerns. Uh, again, as I just reiterated, well, I say reiterated, but I uh, said previously, um, fundamentals are really key to understanding which direction you should trade in. There's no technical level that's gonna stand in the way of value. And that's what fundamentals really are telling you is where value is potentially on a price chart. Are we in expensive, a bargain area? Um, and then, you know, we look for, you know, potential pullbacks, right? But that supply zone there, doesn't look like it didn't look like it was gonna hold. Um, now again, gold being driven more by a weaker dollar and inflation concerns so gold rebounds this was from from friday's article as us payrolls data ease concerns over stimulus so uh, the dollar um uh and and gold tend to work inversely and um any bad news or, or negative sentiment towards uh, the dollar which there is you, you're pretty much seeing you know gold uh, start to um make higher highs. So as long as the inflation theme is still in place, as long as the Federal Reserve is still printing money and not talking about tapering, and as long as there's bearish sentiment overall on the dollar, you should continue to see gold make you know new highs so any pullbacks i think into this area here um this this demand zone should be uh, definitely a buy trade or if prices make new highs and then you're looking for pullbacks into demand zones if there is any kind of positive news around dollar the dollar and um, the fed start to get a bit more hawkish and start to talk about removing tapering then um, really and truly, that's when you want to start to look for short trades. But um, yeah, the path of least resistance is to the upside when it comes to gold. So again, any pullbacks is uh, buying opportunities as long as, again, the, the, the data supports the narrative. And when I say the data supports the narrative, you're looking at, again, more weak dollar. If jobs um, you know, are lagging uh, behind and um, any kind of weak data for the, for the US economy and uh, bearish sentiment or, or dovish sentiment for the Fed, then it's just literally keep continuing to buy gold. Anyways, guys, that's it for this week. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, share if you find the content uh, useful and um, take care and I'll speak to you all soon.